All right, everybody, welcome back to Roto City Tech. And today we've got to move the Miata, we've got to move the Montero, because we're going to make some room so we can build some cornhole boards. And me and Kelsey are going to attempt to do this um, just out of scrap stuff we have, so it's probably not going to be perfect, but it's a good thing to do during uh, the quarantine when we're all kind of stuck at the house. So stay tuned and we'll show you all how we do it. All right, so like I said, this is going to be built with some scraps that we have just laying around. I have these from a bathroom remodel. Um, we need our two boards, our cornhole boards, to be 24 inches wide and 48 inches long. So two feet by four feet. Um, these boards are both eight feet, so if you cut them in half, you will have the correct length at uh, four feet, but they're a little bit too narrow. So what I'm going to do is just cut 12 inches out of each of them and we're going to put them together side by side to form one board that's two feet wide. We will have a line down the middle of the cornhole boards but if we sand it enough real smooth you won't even see those lines. It'll be fine because we'll put some uh, varnish or something over the top to make a smooth surface. So first things first we're going to go over here to the table saw and I'm going to rip straight edges on these so that we have a nice straight line to form. And then I'm going to cut two lengths of 12 inches. So let's do that. Oh. Okay, reds. So, scrap that first idea. We're actually just going to go ahead and cut uh, because we got a factory edge and we can get a straight edge in these. So let's do that. All right, so as you can see, <laughs> bless you, as you can see, we ripped these two boards. Now we have our two 12-inch boards, and together like that, they make two feet across. So now all we have to do is find the exact middle right around here, cut it that way, and we have our two separate cornhole boards. So that is what we're going to start doing, measuring to find that. All right, so we got our four pieces over here for the uh, the top. Now we're gonna build our frame out of two by fours and we need four um, at 48 inches long, four at 21 inches long to build the rectangle frame, and then four at 11 and a half for the legs. So we're gonna work on getting two by fours to make that. All right, so we didn't have enough scrap two by four. We have this two by eight and we are gonna just rip it into a couple of two by fours with the table saw. All right, so now we've got those ripped. So now we have to measure 48 inches out and cut those to length. So I ended up having a bunch of scraps that are a little bit longer than 21, but we just got to cut off four of these to 21, and we should be good with that. All right, so we got the 21 inch ones done. Now we need four more at 11 and a half for the two legs on each board. Yeah. 
Alright, so on the legs, they want you to cut, they want round these corners out because this is what's going to be under the table folding up on itself. So it calls for a three and a half inch radius. I don't have like one of those compass things or whatever, so I just found this roll of tape that is about the width of the 2x4, and we're just going to trace that radius and cut them out with a jigsaw. Easy enough. All right, so next up we're gonna start assembling the frame, crossing our fingers that everything is square. <laughs> All right, so the only screws I have are these inch and three fourths. And that's not really long enough to go through a two by four and get through to the other piece of wood. So I'm just gonna get a three eighths um, drill bit, I don't know, spade bit, so that we can countersink the heads of the screws into the wood. All right, so we ran into something else that I didn't think about. Going down the center, if we just have these two pieces of board where they meet in the middle, there's gonna be nothing supporting them and the bags will hit it. And since it's not one solid piece, they're gonna bounce weird. So we're gonna cut a piece of two by four to go through the center here where we can screw down and have that support to make it one solid piece. All right, so a couple updates. Here's what it looks like now. I realized that once we got our two pieces on, one side, we needed to put in this support here so that we could screw that. So this whole bait, this whole thing will be solid since it's made out of two pieces, because I didn't want to go buy more wood. The other thing that Kelsey mentioned was we can't have this piece going all the way because we have to have a circle cut out right here. So I just made a T here so we can screw here and it'll support and then this won't move because it'll be screwed in here and here. So now we're going to put install this and we'll get ready to cut the hole. We're gonna we're gonna try to find the where the hole should be at the top here and it says we're supposed to go nine inches from the top so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine and then it's, we're supposed to go 12 inches which that'll be pretty easy since our center line is 12 inches so we just have to go 12 inches in and this line here so our center is right here now we just got to find something with six inch radius or diameter one or the other stay tuned 
So we found this coffee can, which is six inches. Perfect size, or the exact size for this hole. So I simply just found the center. It'll be kind of hard to see on camera, but that little dot is the center of the lid. Placed it right on the, my center mark here. Now I'm just gonna trace. There we go. Now we'll just cut this out. Give y'all another good visual what this looks like from the back. So as you can see our bracing we did to keep the wood from flexing here in the center. Right here. So now this is basically all one solid piece. Even up here these pieces don't even flex. I mean just barely. But what we're gonna do probably is sand all this real good and in, in this crack here we can put some wood putty, wood filler or something and uh, let that dry and sand it smooth and uh, you'll hardly even be able to see that there's a crack there and then we can paint this whole thing clear coat it and these will be really awesome really cheap so let's assemble the second board and then we will cut the holes and install the legs on both of them Okay, so now we're gonna put these legs on. I've got these four inch, half inch um, carriage bolts. And we've got our legs sitting here. So basically we're gonna send, send the carriage bolt through here and then these legs are gonna be able to rotate up like that. Which is why we cut the radius on them. So we're just gonna lay this up against here. I'm gonna find the center roughly and I'm just gonna drill a hole through. I'm gonna get a clamp real quick. We've got flat washer and a butterfly nut. All right, so if you want to be really, really perfect, you would trim this so it sits flat. But that, yeah, right there, that'll give us some adjustment, actually. Loosen that wing nut and then move that leg down and tighten it. Now it's secure. All right, so I have this left over also from a bathroom remodel. Um, joint compound. So I think I'm just going to use this to fill in all these screw holes and to fill in this crack. We'll let it dry and sand it and you won't even know. All right, so we got the cornhole boards cleaned off, and now we are gonna spray with just some leftover paint that we had in the shop. 
we're going to spray a base coat and then tape off the design and spray that once it dries. So, here we go. So we're gonna wrap up this video with, we're gonna show you all the finishing touches on the paint that we were able to do. And Kelsey's is like a teal with a copper. Well, it's like a sea foam. Okay, yeah, sea foam with copper striping, which turned out real nice. Lift up on that side for the... Lift on this side? Yeah, just lift, lean it up. There you go so that one turned out really awesome and then we come over here to this one mine was That's like a, teal. a teal with a like a glittered silver we lift up this way and there is that board so anyways we're gonna finish up cleaning up out here and then we'll put everything away. So thanks for watching. Follow us on Instagram, Roto City Tech, and like us on, uh, or like this video on YouTube, and subscribe if you like what you see. We managed to do this with about eight dollars of hardware, and then just leftover stuff. We'll have to buy some bean bags, but that'll be it. And these will be cornhole boards that will go with us camping, just out in the backyard, and uh, or wherever we want to play. So thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all next time.